Greetings, friends. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean. Website can be found at scriptureandprophecy.com. That's where you go to find the archives. That's where you go to support this mission of truth. Well, to, this morning we are going to look at the prophets portion, uh, which happens to only be 10 verses. And it is from the book of Isaiah. It's chapter 54, verses 1 through 10. And it's really this uh, eternal covenant of peace. It's this reminder that in spite of the fact that sometimes God has to bring judgment upon his people, in spite of kind of the darkness that's in the world, he won't forsake us. And uh, it's, it's kind of an important word for us this morning. Additionally, we're going to read... Uh, Matthew from Matthew chapter 24 verses 29 through 42 dealing with the coming of the son of man we'll look at that and uh, you kind of see why they're tied together here uh, once we get to it Uh, before I get into all that um, you know I talk a lot about the beginning passages from the book of Habakkuk and how the it's just like a life like life verses to me um, you know, he, God tells Habakkuk to, to look out at the nations and to be utterly astounded or to be utterly amazed for I will do a work in your days that you wouldn't believe even if you were told. And I, I gotta tell you, I'm looking at the world today. I'm looking out at the nations and I am astounded. I am utterly astounded. I just can't sometimes believe where we've gone in such a short amount of time. I think about what's available on YouTube as an example. The debauchery, the filth, the perversions, the the, the music videos that are now not only are they on YouTube, but they're promoted by YouTube and put in the, uh, you know, what's hot section for all the little kids to watch. And it's usually some woman rolling around on a bed and no clothing, uh, wrapping up obscene languages and just, I'm astonished. Now, those sort of things existed even in the 90s when... I was growing up as a teenager, but it was a little more difficult for a small child to see. And the lyrics would tend to be edited for TV and for radio and things like that, but that's not the case anymore. I mean, it's just full-on debauchery. It's astonishing. And, you know, podcasts like mine will be shadow-censored meaning they haven't blatantly come out and said you're censored, you're shut down, but they'll shadow censor, meaning uh, the feed won't show up or the videos won't show up in people's feeds that are subscribed or they'll unsubscribe people or they'll just suppress the, you know, the research results, things like that. Things I've noticed, they've, they've, that's been going on to me since the very, very beginning. Uh, because in the beginning, when I did Truth Fed, I would report on some of the news and some of the crazy things going on in Syria and all that. And they would, one minute it'd be a hundred thousand views, the next minute it would be completely locked down, and the uh, ad revenue would be stripped. And so, you know, like seven years ago, I just said, "Forget it, I'm not going to do ad revenue," and I've turned it off. And I haven't done ad revenue on this channel in probably seven years. Number one, I wasn't making anything, and number two, they were they were censoring it anyway. So I'm astonished. I look at some of these headlines. U.S. food production just keeps getting slammed by one disaster after another. Something I've been warning about for a good five years. And the reason I've been able to warn about it for a good five years is because it's been a blatant, intentional... <laughs> Uh, thing I've watched them intentionally destroy the food supply intentionally pay farmers to tear up their crops 
If you think that all the uh, meat and poultry places that have just can, you know, spontaneously caught on fire over the last year, if you think that's an accident, it's not. This other headline says, We are witnessing the U.S., Europe, Africa, and China simultaneously experiencing droughts of epic proportions. Severe droughts. And the severe droughts are taking places, taking place in the areas where the food production is. Most people don't realize that a majority of the country's produce comes from California. Another headline says, is someone trying to tell us something? We are being hit by unprecedented droughts and unprecedented flooding at the same time. I just saw a video here in my own state where the, the, just flooding, this incredible flooding in the southern part of the state. I've never seen anything like that in Indiana. There's some things going on, isn't there? And then the question is, do, does the majority of the world see it? And unfortunately, I can only speak to where I'm at. You know, I can only speak from the perspective of the United States. And let me tell you, here in the U.S., people are just oblivious. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how crazy things get. Because they're, they're, they're drugged up. They're comatose. They're, they're just, the TV tells them what to think, what to be afraid of. And so the things that they fear are actually not the real threats, and then the real threats they're just um, they're oblivious about. That's what I experience here dealing with people. Well, with that said, with that ominous beginning of just kind of the reality of where we're at, astonishment. But at the end of that verse, it's not, it's not just Habakkuk, look out at the nations and be astonished. It's look out at the nations, be astonished, be amazed. Why? Because I'm about to do something. And it's so crazy that I can't even tell you about it. Because if I do tell you about it, you won't even believe it because it's that amazing. Let's look at Isaiah. I'm going to read uh, from Isaiah. So I'm going to read Isaiah 54. This is the prophet's portion for the week, the Torah, which is 10 verses. And then I'm going to read that from the Hallelujah Scriptures, and then we'll pull out the King James from Matthew 24. Not a huge amount of commentary. I just want you to hear the words from the Scriptures this morning, and I pray they go forth and they pierce your hearts, and they cause you to draw closer to God. So open up your hearts and see if there be a word here for you this morning. Verse 1. Sing, O barren one, you who did not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not been in labor. For the children of the deserted one are more than the children of the married women, says Yahovah. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Spare not. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you shall break forth to the right and to the left, and your seed inherit the nations. And make the deserted cities inhabited. Do not fear, for you shall not be put to shame, nor hurt. You shall not be humiliated. For the shame of your youth you shall forget. And not remember the reproach of your widowhood any more. For your maker is your husband. Jehovah of hosts is his name. And the Kodesh one, that is to say the Holy One, of Yisrael is your Redeemer. He is called the Elohim of all the earth. For Jehovah has called you like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a wife of youth when you were Refuse declares your Elohim. For a little while I have forsaken you, but with great compassion I shall gather you. In an overthrow of wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I shall have compassion on you. 
said Jehovah, your Redeemer. For this is the waters of Noah to me, and that I have sworn that the waters of Noah would never again cover the earth. So have I sworn not to rebuke, so have I sworn not to be wroth with you, nor to rebuke you. For though the mountains be removed and the hills be shaken, my kindness is not removed from you. Nor is my covenant of peace shaken, said Jehovah, who has compassion on you. So God's talking to Israel, right? And he's like, look, I've, I've, I've put some wrath on you. I've won't forsaken you, but only for a moment. You know, it's like punishment. But I haven't forgotten you, and I'm the one. I'm like a husband to you. I'm Jehovah of hosts. I'm the Holy One. I'm your Redeemer. I'm the God of all the earth. And I have called you to myself. And for a little while you've been forsaken, but with great compassion I shall gather you. He says, this is like the flood of Noah to me. I promised I wouldn't flood the whole earth, and I'm not going to. And then he says, and this is the part that I think sticks out to me, for though the mountains be removed, right? So even though it's just been madness, and the hills be shaken, so everything we thought was foundational, like everything we thought was impenetrable has been torn down the hills, the mountains have been shaken, my kindness is not removed from you, nor is my covenant of peace shaken, says Jehovah who has compassion on you. So that, that is the prophet's portion. And then TorahPortion.org has created what they call the gospel portion, which is verses that they would put along with what we just read. And so we're going to read that, Matthew 24, 29 through 42. Now, I can't go into a deep theological discussion about Matthew 24 because we'd have to read the whole chapter and it would take a lot of breakdown in time. I've done it before. I've done a series in the book of Matthew. Probably could uh, do it again. I mean, just Matthew 24. Um, but what I really want you to focus on, well, let's just read it. Matthew 24 starting with verse 29, okay? Here's what it says. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now, Learn the parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now please note, I'm not one who subscribes to, he's saying... Well, you know what? Here's kind of my view. I believe a lot of this is apocalyptic language that Jesus is using to describe the destruction and judgment that was coming upon Jerusalem in 70 AD. For example, he says, you'll see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. Well, God, Jehovah, uses that language in the Old Testament multiple times that He's he's coming in judgment. He he Elohim is riding on the clouds. Did that mean that people literally looked up and saw God surfing on the cloud? No, it's a apocalyptic literature of judgment. Right? Jesus is Jesus is using the same type of language, and the Jewish people listening, Jewish audience, would have understood kind of that that type of speak. 
And he says, this generation, which I believe he's pointing at his disciples, and he's saying, this generation, you guys, your generation, the one I'm talking to, this generation will not pass away till all these things come to pass. However, when it comes to prophecy, I believe that a lot of times there's a word for now. Uh, just like the Old Testament prophets, the prophecies they were given to Israel were to them right then. But we know that a lot of it was also futuristic, right? Talking about the coming Messiah and all those things. And so I believe a lot of times prophecy has a f fulfillment to the generation it's spoken to. And then it can have a, a fulfillment to a later generation. Meaning that this should not fall on deaf ears to us. But I just don't think we should take it out of context like a lot of the YouTube prophets do. A lot of the end time prophecy teachers do. Because we could very easily look at uh, look out at the nations, right? And be utterly astounded. And we can see, kind of like the parable of the fig tree, right? Like we see all this stuff happening. It's kind of obvious where this is all headed, right? And so we're seeing these things. And we can't help but know that something is at the door, right? We're watching the leaves it's the exact it's the parable of the fig tree right that the branches are tender it's put forth its leaves we know that summer is nigh something is coming verse 35 he says heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away well we know that's future right because heaven and earth didn't pass away in 70 AD right it was just Jerusalem so see how you can have a mixture of things when we're dealing with prophetic this is why prophecy is so dangerous is people will take things out of context or they won't understand the difference between apocalyptic language or literal language and they it prophecy in my opinion is not so you know the future but so that when it happens you can go oh god is the god of the universe he is the one who dares to predict the future it's not really until hindsight that prophecy is understood but we can get kind of a general idea, right? It's kind of like we don't know when Messiah is coming back. But we can kind of get an idea of the season. And we're looking at the seasons now. And we're going, it's got to be at the door, right? That's kind of how I view prophecy. It's, And I, it, I refuse to have arguments with people over it. It's like, okay, that's your view. That's fine. We're almost done here. Verse 36, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, not even, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. And two women shall be grinding at the mill, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Last verse for this morning. Watch, therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. Now listen, that was true in 70 AD, and it's true today. We just talked about some of the things going on in the world to start the podcast, like, and how oblivious it seems like the average person is to these strange realities. They're, it's like the days of Noah. They're eating, drinking, getting married. They're like, they literally think life will just continue to go on. Everything will work out and it'll be fine. We're not going to worry about all the evil taking place. We're not going to worry about, you know, what's going on with the food supply or any of that because that, those things could never happen. The flood came and took them all away. They were eating, they were drinking, they were giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. It's sudden destruction. It's everything is fine and then the next minute it's not all of a sudden. That's what the picture of the day of Noah is. It's like Noah enters the ark, boom, chaos. And if you weren't on that boat, it was too late. 
I really think that's a message to this generation. And just like it was a message to that generation. And Jesus ends with saying, look, you don't, you better be paying attention. Watch. You don't know when the Lord is coming. But it'll be sudden. It'll be unexpected. There's not going to be like, you know, a, they're not, angels aren't going to fly over and drop a few letters to say, hey, three days from now, Jesus is coming back. You're written. <laughs> it's just going to happen. And there's going to be some who are like the evil servant who said, well, my Lord delayed in his coming. I'm just going to go back to my sin and goof off. And then, boom, the master returns. And the master says to the evil servant, the you wicked and slothful servant, you wicked servant, your portion is with the unbelievers. Now's not the time for us to be falling asleep. Now's not the time for us to get nonchalant about our relationship with God. I pray that you've been blessed this morning. I know that this episode has been all over the place. It's just been 20 minutes of just everywhere. But I pray that it's spoken to you this morning, that you've been strengthened. And if, if anything, I hope that you're, it's, helps you, it's helping you to renew your mind about looking up and about understanding the times that we're living in, the bizarre and wild times that we're living in. Surely, our Messiah is at the door. Peace, grace be with all of you. And until next time, an explosion inside. And time, time is ticking by. And I can feel an explosion inside. As in the days of Noah. As in the days of Noah. Do we drink? To build a boat on sand What a fool they say It's never rained before It's never rained before It's never rained before As in the days of Noah So it will be In the coming of the Son of Man And what a fool they say To fast and pray But remember this first, that many, many, many scoffers will come And when the rain starts falling, it's too late, it's too late And when the rain starts falling, it's too late, it's too late
It's too 